Welcome to Chinta Statistics and Data Science. Today we are going to solve this problem from IIT JMMS 2022, problem number 37. The problem says that let xy be a discrete random vector, then which of the following statements is or are true? There are four options, and this is a multiple select question, that means more than one option may be correct. The first option says that if x and y are independent, then x square and y mod, mod y is mod y are also independent so if x and y are independent then x square and mod y are also independent we have to see if it is true or not so first option let us analyze the first option so x and y are independent that means probability x less than equals x and y less than equals y is nothing but probability x less than equals x into probability y less than equals y that means the joint cdf actually splits out into the product of the individual cds right for all x y in r for all real numbers x and y independence of x y implies this thing this equation now let u is x square and v equals to mod y then let us try to see what about the joint pd joint cdf of u and v so probability u less than equals u and v less than equals v is nothing but probability x square less than equals u and mod y less than equals v right now this thing this quantity can be written as probability minus root u is less than equals x is less than equals root u and minus v is less than equals y is less than equals v this thing can be split out because x and y are independent right so this thing actually can be split out into probability x lies between this quantity and pro pro probably into probability y lies between minus v and plus v right so it just means that probability x square is less than equals u and probably into probability mod y is less than equals v therefore ultimately we have found out that the joint cdf of u and v can be written as the product of the marginal cdfs of u and v right can be written as that that means x square and mod y are also independent now it, it actually just follows immediately that if x and y are independent then any function of x is also independent of any function of y it's very logical right but i've just shown the proof so that it just stays a bit rigorous so option a is true option is true now if the correlation coefficient of a between x and y is one then probability y equals to ax plus b is equals to one for some a and b real numbers this, this is actually also true right off the bat from the definition because if the correlation is plus or minus one if the correlation between two random variables x and y is plus or minus one then they actually lie on a line it is true then just let's just try to prove that that if the correlation is one then this is the case it is indeed the case so see variance of x by standard deviation of the sigma x variance of x my x by sigma x minus y by sigma y this entire quantity, this is a random variable, right? This sigma x and sigma y are constant, but x and y are random variables. So this entire quantity is random variable, right? So variance of this thing is obviously non-negative. Variance is always non-negative. Now this thing, if we just split out, if we just expand this thing, is nothing but variance of x by sigma x square plus variance of y by sigma y square minus two covariance of x y by sigma x sigma y is greater than equals zero, right? So this entire thing actually is nothing but two minus two rho is greater than equals zero where rho is nothing but the correlation between x and y right therefore rho is less than equals one which is obviously true we know that correlation cannot be greater than one now it, it is equal to one if and only if this variance quantity is actually zero right this this rho less than equals one we have got from this idea that variance is greater than equals zero now this is actually equal to one if and only if variance is actually equal to zero right this entire quantity but this, if variance is equal to zero that means this entire random variable is actually degenerate therefore this entire thing probability this entire thing act, is actually equals to c is one right because it is degenerate this entire quantity is degenerate at some real number c for some constant c therefore just adjusting this whole thing we get probability y is equals to a plus bx for some real numbers a and b right so we have actually proved that if the correlation is one then y equals to a plus bx probability y equals to a plus bx is actually one here here it be it will be actually one this thing this actually one this thing so option b is also true right option b is also true what about the third one if x and y are independent and expectation of x y whole square is zero then p of x is equals to zero is one or p of y equals to zero is one so x and y are independent and expectation of x y whole square is zero so expectation of x y whole square is zero that means expectation of x square into y square is zero now, since x and y are independent, therefore the expectation actually spits out, right? So, expectation of x square into expectation of y square is zero. That means either expectation of x square is zero or expectation of y square is zero. So, let us take the first case. If expectation of x square is zero, that means variance of x, 
plus expectation of whole x whole square is zero. Now this quantity is not negative and this quantity is also not negative, right? Therefore, and their sum is zero. That means variance of x is also zero and expectation of x is also zero. That means x is degenerate at the point zero, right? So probability x is equals to zero is one. So in so in case expectation of x squared is zero, we get that probability x is equals to zero is one. Similarly, for the case this one, if expectation of y squared is zero, that means probability y equals to zero is one. Therefore, ultimately we get probability x equals to zero is one or probability y equals to zero is one. Therefore, option C is also true. If x and y are independent with expectation of x y being x y whole square being zero, then x is degenerate at zero or y is degenerate at zero. Now, last the last option. Therefore, option C is also true. So A, B, C all are true. Now let check. Let us check option D. So if variance of x is zero, then x and y are independent. This is actually pretty easy. Variance of x is zero. That means x is actually a degenerate random variable, right? So probability x is equals to c is one for some real number c, right? Therefore, y is obviously independent of x because x is always going to take the value c, right? It is certain to take the value c. Therefore, it doesn't matter to y. Or y is obviously independent of x, right? So option D is also true. Therefore, for this problem, all of the options A, B, C, D all are true. So there you have it, the solution to this problem. Do like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more exciting problems. See you till next time.